Welcome to Love Where You Live, your monthly magazine for the best things that are going on in Sheboygan County. I'm Betsy Alice, your host. I am the executive director of the Sheboygan County Chamber. And this morning we have three guests on the program. I'm going to look at my notes so that I make sure I have their names correctly. Um, we have Carissa Frank from the Sheboygan County Community Partnership for Children Coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> the longest title of the group. Um, and then we also have Matricia Patterson to my left, Executive Director of Family Connections, and Luann Travis, Executive Director of the Family Resource Center. Welcome, all of you. Thank you for having us. So, and thank, you, thank you for coming out on this cold day. We are celebrating the new year, and I think with that, we're going to talk about how we celebrate the new people in our community, the newest, tiniest people in our community, um, and how your programs can, can pave the way to have the most successful birth of a new baby. Um, today, we'll be talking about this new program, and it's called Welcome Baby. So first, first question, if you'd tell us a little bit Luann and Carissa, I think, have this question about the Community Partnership for Children Coalition. They're participating in this group and a little history about how this initiative began in Sheboygan County. Okay, so I guess I was picked to, to start because I probably have a little more historical knowledge about it. Probably about three years ago, United Way um, of Sheboygan County had uh, was looking at going to more of uh, looking at programs that they were doing that were more prevention based, more strength based, mm -hmm. and how do we engage with families and with um, our community in a positive, strength based way. And they also were looking at the fact that oftentimes we all know that the research shows that when there's crisis or need, um, there were a lot of signs way before the crisis happened, mm -hmm. before the need happened. And so you put that together and it says the best way to partner with people and support people and have a healthy community is to get started early, really early. Mm -hmm. And so the new year and a new year baby, you know, and all these things about babies, research shows that the sooner we support healthy child development, the better for that baby's development, also the best for the family resiliency. So United Way wanted to have all organizations and partners who are invested in healthy child development and family resiliency to get together to create this coalition based with a collective impact model. So we collectively mm -hmm. work together on this shared mission and then how do we use the resources we have as agencies as opposed to making brand new resources? No more silos, not more silos, but having everyone come together to work together. So the focus right now for the Community Partnership for Children is birth to four years old or five years old to get them ready for school and support their healthy development. And it was based basically on the model that's in Brown County. Um, Brown County has the exact same coalition <coughs> as far as the Community Partnership for Children. Manitowoc County also has an early learning um, coalition, which Patricia knows much more about than I do, and in Fond du Lac. So when we looked at Fond du Lac, Manitowoc, Brown County, but Sheboygan County did not have this. Mm -hmm. So United Way went to Brown County and studied their model. And um, very quickly, uh, they shared with us the information about Welcome Baby. And then their big suggestion was don't just start with everyone volunteering to come together in this coalition only, but hire a coordinator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hire someone who's gonna keep us all gelled and keep everybody together and focused. And so we are very grateful because we've had different funding from different partners in the community to hire Carissa. Um, and Brown County, of course, was a little, they were just, they were just so excited that we could do this right away because it took them probably about eight years into their coalition to do oh, this. Oh, wow. Yeah, they said theirs was a long time. <coughs> ha -ha. It's really nice to so learn from right. others' experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's Carissa. <laughs> so here's Carissa. And so yeah, in January, I was hired to coordinate um, the coalition in general. So the Community Partnership for Children, again, like Luann said, is focused on that prenatal or birth to five years old. Um, and then supporting their families so they get a good start. So um, we have all sorts of organizations. Um, we have healthcare, hospital, Sheboygan County Health and Human Services, um, our nonprofits like Family Research Center, um, Family Connections, and other 
nonprofits that are focused on children and the families, um, and as well as individuals in the community with certain strengths. Um, so it's really been great. We had um, quarterly meetings this year, and um, it was just awesome to see that group coming together. So the first priority mm -hmm. was um, the welcome baby, starting that early, early start. So mm -hmm. it just made sense for our coalition to start that way. No, it's, I think it's a wonderful development and just speaking on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce and all of the businesses in the area, yeah. you know, the idea that most soft skills are learned before the age of five um, will also have an impact on their employment years from now. Absolutely. So I think that's why we have a big um, stake in this program as well. Yeah. And I think that's important, Betsy, because mm -hmm. many people think, oh, that's a really nice thing to do is to reach out to families. Mm -hmm. It's a necessary thing to do. Mm -hmm. All the research shows that that first five years is crucial for long-term outcomes, whether it's your mm -hmm. workforce development, um, healthcare outcomes, mm -hmm. and all mental of health. that. Mental health, mm -hmm. physical health, all of that. And if anybody wants a great resource, you just go to the Harvard um, website for the Center on the Developing Child. They have put a ton mm -hmm. of information on there about we have to start earlier, and also in a very strength-based way, not in a crisis way. Mm -hmm. So Nice. Well, good to have you nodded way at the center of this coordinating it. I, I think that's probably the magic Absolutely. and the reason it'll be so successful. Well, that's a lot to ask of a group of people that's already, you know, so immersed in their own organizations, mm -hmm. where they can take their time and they've all devoted a lot of time to this, but it's, mm -hmm. I can see the need as far as having some, someone that's their sole job to coordinate, no, that's coordinate the projects. Excellent, excellent. So, Matricia and Luann, again, um, welcome again. and. I understand Welcome Baby is a new program, mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to know what the mission of that particular program is, if you could share. Yes, so with the coalition, as we explained, the various components of the community came together, um, and as a mission, which applies to Welcome Baby, uh, Milwaukee, the uh, Sheboygan County Coalition, their goal is to help children and families to grow, learn, and achieve. So once we're doing that in the community, we know that um, Welcome Baby becomes part of that. Um, with, mm -hmm. with Welcome Baby, that's part of the mission as well. And what's the process for it? And, you know, I know sure. some new staff have been hired. You know, how does the program work? Yes, um, we were very fortunate through, again, United Way to um, contract with us, um, Family Resource Center and Family Connections to hire new staff to work the program. Uh, with Welcome Baby, it's all new first-time parents. Mm -hmm. So we hired with Family Connections two community resource specialists. These uh, family resource specialists, um, they are very experienced. There's Karen Apex and also Susan Crisp on our end. Um, and then Luann, she'll talk about the uh, parent um, as teacher's um, coordinator that she's hired. But with, with our end, we are the resource end. So they are very well informed and experienced when it comes to um, early child development. Um, that's their passion, that's their background. They understand birth to five um, and the needs of children. They also understand community resources and are currently um, looking at what else is out there and what's in the Sheboygan com County community because we know that there's a, a, a vast array of resources that can help uh, new parents, so they're connecting, making those connections in the community uh, to make sure that as they visit those first-time parents, um, they are getting the parents what they need. Uh, so with uh, contracting uh, to provide that service to the community, the uh, resource specialists, they're, um, you know, if you can imagine, they're at the office and they're waiting for the, the call from the hospital's Aurora or St. Nick's. Mm -hmm. um, they get those calls almost every day because they're to visit. Um, we expect about a little over 300 uh, new mm -hmm. families, new uh, parents, new babies okay. in the in the county. So when they get that call, they have a um, a case of resources that they carry with them um, to the hospital. Um, they have badges. They're volunteers with the hospital so that they're able to first um, get that information. Uh, from the nurses at the hospital of some of the expectations of the parents, some of what the needs are from the parents. And then they also, once they're there, they actually um, have that opportunity to learn more about the parents' needs as they're talking to the parents. The parents have been very receptive and um, the families are there 
um, to also give input and information about what's needed um, for this first time family, first time parent. So once they're there, they're giving resources um, that families may not have known about that's in the community, um, such as the WIC program or, or mental health information. Maybe there's some basic needs that uh, the family might have from uh, Pampers to formula, but they're there to make sure that families are getting what they need um, at the time as well as following up with them. So um, once they leave and go home, um, they also give them a call to see if they need anything so that it's an ongoing relationship so that that family knows that they can call them in the future if there are any needs that, that they might have. Um, when they're at the hospital, they also talk to them and give them information about um, safe sleep, for example. So um, giving them a book as a, as a welcome gift that talks about safe sleep, giving them a booklet of information and actually going through that booklet with them of uh, community resources in the Sheboygan County area. Um, once they um, uh, do have that information, they're also welcome to have a home visit. So um, that's an, an optional visit that they can also have. And Luann has uh, more information about that because then that's where that collaboration comes in where we're able to hand that family off um, to uh, the Family Resource Center and, and their staff to, to further help in the home. Um, we also make sure that all this information and there's outcomes you know so we make sure that there's a database that we're entering all the information in so that we know what the outcomes are um, for our families in the future so that gives a feel of, of the process um, of what happens for the community resource specialist that family resource specialist that understands child development and is at the hospital with the family on those visits and then Luann has more about the Family Resource Center and what happens in the home. Yeah, so I mean, if you just kind of imagine, as you will, you're a first-time mom, just had a baby. and Panic. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And you've got the <coughs> nursing staff, and we know that being at the hospital is a quick turnaround. It's a quick, you know, you're in, you're out. And that resource specialist just tries to get into your room to say hi and welcome your baby and welcome you and talk about those resources. But we know that all can't be done in 24 hours. We know that. So we want to make sure once the mom is discharged, then um, they get a phone call follow-up. You're home now. We know we talked to you about resources. Is there anything else we can do for you? And then also offer if a parent educator can come and visit if that mom seems to be engaged and wants more information, and it can't be done through a quick visit at the hospital, and it can't be done through a phone call, then the parent educator comes in, and then the parent educator comes to the home and does a visit to really just sit down and make sure that the dots are being connected, but also that the questions are being addressed. Sometimes it's not because I need formula or diapers or I need to get on WIC. Sometimes it's because they got questions that, um, you know, about the child development, about healthy attachment, you know, about swaddling, about soothing. Um, and also in all cases, the parent educator encouraging the mom to contact her doctor if she's got questions. Sometimes we need that assurance that your questions are not silly. That's what your doctor is okay. there for. So we never go in acting like a healthcare professional. You know, but we are trained, it's a trained parent educator for the parents as teachers model, which is a home visitation model, federally accepted nationwide. So we try to really support that mom being engaged with her doctor also, um, because uh, that's important to feel that advocacy mm -hmm. that it is okay to make that phone call and ask these questions. So, so much has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about when I had children, which was a little, a little bit of time ago, back when you stayed in the hospital for four days. Wow. And you still only had this much interaction. You know, you had these few instructions before you went home, and that was it. Correct. You know, other than La Leche League and places like that, that if you had made that connection, right. you had no support. Right. Well, I remember when I had my first son, like, my husband's driving us home, and we look back, and we're like, oh, my gosh, like, we were yesterday, we were two, and now we're three, and now we're actually, like, taking him home and taking a right. tiny human that, you know. Yeah. So yeah. just supporting that is really And that's what we yeah. love about this program. This program is not because you qualify, because right. you are in crisis or need-based. This program is we make no assumptions mm -hmm. that, that you feel confident and capable or that you even understand how the, all the services work in this county. Right. And so um, we just want it to be a clean slate. We're here for whatever your needs are. We're engaged as long as you're engaged. 
and some of the parents were hoping that need to have maybe some more long-term home visitations will then allow that parent educator to continue to come back because that's what we do at the Family Resource Center. We do home visitation where we go every other week or once a month into the home to support that family's resiliency, their well-being, and the child's healthy development. So we, you know, we'd like this to be a very um, common practice that when people mm -hmm. talk about their resource specialist who came to the hospital, oh, it was so great when she came and I talked to her, my parent educator. We would love to have people say, my parent educator. I go, oh yeah, what did your parent educator? Yeah, that's a great way to look at it because I think that changing that perception over time or even immediately would be a great thing. Right. Because I, to know that this is available was what surprised me mm -hmm. to anyone. Yeah. Right. And that it happens automatically. I, I asked, you know, what qualification is there? And you sure. said, you have to have a baby. I yeah. thought, well, okay, I don't qualify. But, <laughs> but I mean, it's just a wonderful service um, that right. people might think is not available to them. Mm -hmm. Correct. And if you didn't get that visit, because we know babies come, at different times right. <laughs> and people get discharged. Mm -hmm. sure. If you don't feel like you've gotten the information, you can call Carissa at United Way. Sure. You can call Family Resource Center. Mm -hmm. You can call Family Connections. That's what this coalition is. It's not about right. one agency having all the eggs in their basket. It's about many agencies mm -hmm. working together so that we can say, oh, you didn't get visited by the family, the resource specialist. Mm -hmm. Carissa knows who they are. You have them. I have the parent educator. We. And yeah. we really want to make that continuum of service mm -hmm. to be very seamless, mm -hmm. to let parents know this was really cool, that we felt supported. Well, I think this is very exciting. And, and I understand there are other places that, that also have this program that you've learned from. And I think we talked a little bit about that already, Brown County yes. and, and Fond du Lac, et cetera. This one piece, right, mm -hmm. the coalition is looking at other pieces of supporting healthy child development. And as this coalition, which when you think about it, is only formally a year old. Okay. So it's formally a year old and it's itself a baby. Right, it is. <laughs> so now the Welcome Baby program is one activity and right. we have other activities we're looking at. So let's talk about some of those. Go ahead, Carissa. Sure, yeah. Um, well, United Way also had um, a piece in or supporting the Born to Succeed initiative in Plymouth. So Luann also is um, coordinating some of the developmental screening events. So in, during their home visits, as their child grows, they do developmental screening to make sure they're on track. So if a parent maybe doesn't take home visits um, or decide to do that, um, we are, they're hosting events, um, screening events that anyone could register their childbirth to for. Um, yeah. So we're looking at, and that was a pilot program in Plymouth, um, funded by United Way a few years back. So uh, we're looking now to take that model and move it into all of Sheboygan County. Excellent. So that's kind of our next step is to providing those screens, Sheboygan County wide. Yeah, we've had a really great um, result in Plymouth. Um, typically a school system will do developmental screens in February, March, or April for mm -hmm. two and a half year olds up. But again, roll it back. Mm -hmm. Why are you waiting for two and a half to three years old to introduce to families that concept of developmental screening? Let's start right at birth to say three times a year through your community, you can have a developmental screen. Mm -hmm. And it's a tool called the ASQ that doctors are very familiar with. Mm -hmm. Doctors will mail them out or you'll do it in the waiting room. But if you haven't marked it or walked through it right, it can look great and it can get filed. And nobody really knows it. But when you come to a developmental screen, the parent learns about the significance of the screen and now has a screen that, if there's any red flags, can go with that tool to their doctor and have a very intentional conversation, and that doctor knows that tool. So we think we're, again, supporting health care mm -hmm. and supporting parents' advocacies by mm -hmm. using a common tool. I think that's the magic. Mm -hmm. We all need a common language to start talking about our child's mm -hmm. development. And just having that look. Mm -hmm. That look, see every, you mm -hmm. said three times a year? We did it in Plymouth for three times a year. Mm -hmm. um, we partnered with the Plymouth School System. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned through this uh, Born to Succeed is that each school district needs to be involved to make this successful. Mm -hmm. It can't be just Family mm -hmm. Resource Center doing screenings. Right. It can't be just Family right. Connections. Mm -hmm. So we have public health, the public school system, 
Family Resource Center, Family Connections, and some child care centers. We're trying to get some mm -hmm. of their staff involved in the sure, screening. Sure, that's a good, yep. So that good we point. start creating that common language with child care centers. So hopefully the ASQ mm -hmm. becomes that Absolutely. something you're familiar with at your child care center, with your doctor, with your school system, all of that. So where do you see this in five years? I look at it from the work force development perspective mm -hmm. in that what we're doing from birth to five is we understand that the brain is developing rapidly at that time and it's the time to shape productivity. So their social emotional skills for example, um, learning impulse control, learning um, motivation and attentiveness, all of those the skills that are important, persistence, you know, although all of this is important in the workplace, um, sociability. So having that is it's a, a great investment. So we're looking at investing in children early so that in the future um, we have a productive workforce. You know, we're shaping the future. Mm -hmm. uh, well said. I think that's mm -hmm. part of the reason that we worked with the United Way initially when we started talking about this and mm -hmm. had a few sessions with our members about the whole early learning spectrum and, and how important mm -hmm. it was. In five years, yeah. we should be a coalition that paints that picture that parents are commonly talking mm -hmm. about having a visit from a parent educator, if not a long-term visit, and yes. that how a family resource specialist, you know, follow-up phone calls, mm -hmm. you know, so that other parents are saying, boy, they didn't have that when we were having a baby. Right. And, you yeah. know what I mean? That's what we really want to do is make it part of the fabric of parenting Absolutely. and not a stigmatized not a signature. It's yeah. more proactive, like, where do I get one? Mm -hmm. Where do I get a parent educator? Where do I get yes. a visit from a resource mm -hmm. specialist? And that's where Brown County is right now, and that's where we want to go. We want to visit for, you know, all new parents or at least understanding the resources. Well, congratulations to all of you for your hard work around this Thank and you. the continued success of these programs. I think the the coordination of it is essential, and I I appreciate and I know the community will appreciate this very much. Thank you. So let's thanks. make that goal. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, thanks to United yes. Way for planning mm -hmm. that seat. We appreciate United, United Way. Planning well, take that care. Seat. And, you know, I hope you'll stay with me for the second part of our program today. Thanks to these folks for, for bringing us this message today. Welcome back to Love Where You Live, your monthly magazine of the best things happening in Sheboygan County. I am Betsy Alice, the Executive Director of the Sheboygan County Chamber, and I'm here to share with you today a few of the things that are upcoming for the Chamber and our members and our communities in the months ahead. I think first on the list always is the Chamber Champions Gala, which this year will be at the Ostoff Resort on February 21st. This is our chance to recognize the best of the best of our businesses, of individuals, and of organizations in Sheboygan County that are really making that big difference. Um, this year we have more than 60 nominations for our awards. The awards are, are as follows. Manufacturer of the Year, Services Company of the Year, Retailer of the Year, Nonprofit Organization of the Year, Tourism Star, Culinary Star, those are the best chefs and restaurants. Ambassador of the Year, the Ambassadors are a program in the Chamber of, of folks that wear blue jackets and do great things in our community, welcoming businesses, cutting blue ribbons, um, doing a lot of the greeting at our business after hours events, and each year they select the best of their top ambassadors for an award. We also have the Chamber Superstar, which is a Lifetime Achievement Award. We don't always give these out, but it's possible that one of those will be revealed at the gala as well. And there's another award that is one of my favorites called Working Together. And this award was established to recognize organizations like government, nonprofit organizations that are working with businesses to accomplish some major initiative in our area. And this year I believe we have six um, nominations just for that one award, which is a great sign. So the evening is a red carpet evening. The tickets are now on sale at Sheboygan.org. 
You'll notice something new about Sheboygan.org if you go there. Um, it is now a brand new website. So you, I think you'll find it simpler to uh, negotiate. You'll be able to register for our events very easily. And just to see the breadth and scope of the kinds of programs that the Chamber undertakes. So I, I encourage you all to just take a look at Sheboygan.org. This year, for the first time ever, the Chamber will be hosting an Athena Award Luncheon. And that is, that'll be in May. And that award is going to be sponsored by the Kohler Company. That award will go to the top person in our community who has encouraged leadership in women. It may be a woman, it may be a man, but it's someone who has strengthened the path for women to go to the top of our organizations. So that's a brand new award offered by the Chamber and we hope that you'll support that award and think about who you might want to nominate for that award. Our coastal organization has now grown to 600 young professionals, so that's an important one to watch. Look at their events on our website at Sheboygan.org. And uh, hopefully, if you're between the ages of 21 and 40, you can take advantage of some of the programs and events they offer. And then last but not least, our Sheboygan travel in the fall of 2017 will be on the Rhine and the Mosul rivers in Europe. This will be a phenomenal riverboat excursion, so if you're interested in that, again, just let us know and we can give you more information. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next month.